All right, we have an obstruction play in Toronto, actually Buffalo. It's obstruction type B, and we're going to talk about it because the umpires called it, but then called the runner out. So what exactly happened here? We have a pickoff gone. Ari Guriel's the runner. You can see the entanglement in the circle. He's already leaning toward third, so he's definitely hindered in his attempt. He went back into the base standing up, not sliding, and that's key to officiating this play. So our umpire, Chad Whitson, calls it. Obstruction B, keep play alive. No play actively being made on the runner because the ball's already in center field. That's proper. And then there's the tag out. Carlson calls the out. Now the umpires get together. What is the award for obstruction B? Remember, no play being made on the runner. You wait until no further action is possible. So you call the out because an out occurred. And then once the play's over, time, and you impose such penalties that will nullify the act of obstruction. That's the key phrase. What would have happened had obstruction not occurred? That is the key question, and we're going to figure this out scientifically, or at least we're going to try. Your mileage may vary. There's the ball, there's the runner. We are actually going to timestamp when the fielder catches the ball, which is at 110.23. That's the first frame where the fielder has the ball in his glove, and then we're going to find the runner being tagged at 111.17. The difference is 94 hundredths of a second. So it's less than a second of difference. Now, how long did the hindering of the obstruction act take? This is in real time. We're going to play it through. Stop, watch, go. And it appears that it is 1.74 before the runner is able to get back on his feet. He does a barrel roll in the direction of third base, but his momentum is completely broken. Remember, he went back in standing, and then he tripped and fell due to the fielder. And now he's not standing anymore. There's an angle from center field that shows again what it looks like. And we're going to get another angle of this from the first base camera, a uh, high camera. Impressive lean on the fielder there. He, he swings his leg around unintentionally, intentionally, it doesn't really matter, to trip up that runner. And that's the basis for the obstruction call. The question is, was the difference in the out being recorded of 0.94 versus the obstruction timing of 1.74 seconds, is that enough to constitute awarding this guy third base? Or to nullify the act, or do we believe he would have been out regardless? And if we're struggling, the the air here, the side of caution, should be given the benefit to the offense, not the defense, because the defense is the one that screwed up by obstructing, not the offense. Here's comparison of play in 2017, similar obstruction play, and the runner getting tagged out. We froze the frame when the fielder first got the ball. In both situations, the umpires ultimately decided to declare the runner out. Take a look at both of those, figure out if you think that one is like the other or not. This video was sponsored by OutWest Officials, our equipment dealer. Go to outwestofficials.com for all your equipment needs now that baseball is back. We'll see you on the site over here at closecallsports.com.